Hey everybody, how's it going? My name's The Breath, and welcome to another video. No, your eyes are not deceiving you, I am back with another one. If anyone's seen my update video from what I believe is a couple of months ago, you'd have known that this one was in the works. So, what are we doing today? Well, today I'm going to be asking the question, can you beat Pokemon Leaf Green with only a Poochyena? Poochyena is a, well, frankly terrible Pokemon, even for a first stage. Boasting a somewhat respectable 55 base attack, the rest of the stats either being 30 or 35 give it a measly base total of 220. The pure dark type does give it access to some lovely stab moves like crunch or bite flinch hacks, as well as having only two weaknesses in bug and fighting, while resisting ghost and dark itself. The psychic immunity is a nice little bonus, but it's all rather overshadowed by one little fact. Those lovely stab dark moves? Yeah, this is Gen 3, so they're all special and running off of that base 30. This is one of those challenges where I genuinely believe it is going to be a challenge, and between you and me, I honestly don't know if this is possible. The only way to know for sure is to jump right into it. The game begins and we choose the female character, giving ourselves the iconically predictable name, at least in my world, of Breath. Faced with our rival, I have no idea what to call him. I recorded this about a month ago now, so don't ask me why I went for Frank with a C. Probably because he's a bougie twat in the game and it's a fitting name. I, I honestly don't know. Anyhow, we load ourselves into the world of Pokemon and try to leave, only to be greeted by an old man in a trench coat telling us we need to use protection for something or other before dragging us back to his dungeon. There, we find our little pooch, picking the dog and naming him Milo, named after my own dog who recently had to have a toe amputated. Send some love for Milo down in the comments. He won't know about it because he's a dog, but who really cares? Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm, so drop some love down below. From there, we had North, popping into the shop and being given a suspicious parcel along with a simple task. Give it to the lonely old man back in the lab. With that task completed, we get a little bit of free reign now. My moveset consists of Tackle, Howl and Sand Attack. Realistically speaking, a beautiful early game set for Milo, giving us access to accuracy drops and attack stat buffs. So the logical step was at level 9 to challenge the rival. Let me tell you now, Frank might be a knob, but he's a bloody hard knob, isn't he? My god, I took quite a pounding here time after time after time. The issue is that that Pidgey has the keen eye ability, so Sand Attack is literally useless against it, but not against me, and guess what move that little you know what I likes to spam? Yeah, that's right. So basically, I'm too weak to buff my attack high enough, and subject to the omnipotent will of the most devilish little bird in the world, a Pigeon. Basically, we lose and lose and lose some more. Oh, I'd need a pick me up. And you can help with that by liking this video, subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell icon. Stay until the end to find out when you can expect more uploads from me and leave your challenge suggestions in the comments below. If I pick your suggestion, I'll give you a shout out in the next one. Right, the obligatory self-promotion done and we're moving on like that never happened. We make our way to Pewter City and the rock type gym leader Brock. Let me tell you now, for one of, if not the only time in this game, having access to bite on that abysmal special stat actually turned out to be a good thing, at least in terms of the damage it can deal. The lower special defense stats of the Geodude and the Onyx mean that Poochyena defeats the first gym with relative ease. In the Mount Moon now and the obligatory fossil section, I choose the Helix fossil, no the dome fossil all the way. Ah, uh, hate me, slate me, masturbate, well, no, 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 I definitely can't make that joke. I'm trying a slightly more family friendly approach for this one, but only slightly. Cerulean City, and I have a choice to make, tackle Misty or rescue Bill. I decide that given my level and Misty's ace having a dark type weakness, that by all rights, it should have been an easy fight. How bloody wrong was I? 
I couldn't even land a hit on the Starmie, and even if I could, there is no chance I could have hit it with enough force to one-shot it, which I would need to do, otherwise I'm just going to get wiped out. So I bite the bullet, and I make my way towards Bill. On the way, I make a tactical play, drawing out the trainer enough to give me access to the secret power TM. I immediately teach Poochiena the move as an upgrade to tackle. 70 base power and having the ability to do everything you see on screen now, from paralysis to poison to lowering certain stats, all depending on the environment the move is used in. Overall, it's really quite a versatile move. Once I'm done making sure that Milo is not a completely useless pup, we head to Bill's house to help separate him from his blow up polka doll with the use of a handy PC app. Letting him use the machine, becoming human once again and gifting us SS and tickets, we head back down to Cerulean to finally give Misty the spanking she deserves. H hang on, can I get away with saying that? What's this perpetually? I'm getting the word. Nuts. FBI, open up! Yeah, I remade the clip from ages ago just because I wanted to deal with it. Misty wasn't difficult. We get the Starmy without taking any damage and one shot it with bite. Thank God we did though. I would not have been able to survive another water pulse. So, despite having an HM slave in the party that knows the move cut, for the sake of continuity, I head down to Vermilion and in particular to the SSN where Frank and his poncy French greetings smack us in the face. Our moveset has been upgraded to include Dig because hashtag breaths are pleb, that's why. Totally useless move in the grand scheme of all things Poochiena, but I figured it was high base power and a little more coverage. I can't recall using it too often, but I knocked out Frank's Charmeleon with it, so that's something I guess. Once he's dispatched, we head up to the captain's room where we see him, back turned, right arm moving vigorously in the direction of a waste paper basket full of scrunched up tissues. We approach and give him the old breathy special until it's all over and he rewards us with the HM for cut and sends us on our way. On a side note, the SSN might be the slowest bloody thing I've ever seen. As you can see now on screen, this is the clip playing in real time. Not sped up as I usually would, not slowed down for effect, just exactly as long as it takes. How stupid is this? With that finally done and a crap ton of pent up aggression thanks to that cutscene, I head into the most calming, relaxing, zen like gym in the game and Lieutenant Surge's totally not rage inducing puzzle. I can't lie, it took me like 20 minutes to beat and then we had the gym fight. Short story is that Surge really isn't that difficult, we one shot everything with dig despite paralysis and double team boosts we never actually missed either out of there we traverse through rock tunnel and into the celadon game corner where we get to fight giovanni i won't lie these fights are the ones that scared me the most before i started recording this i know he's got poison point pokemon in later encounters tough rock types that soak up damage and can dish it out as well everything had me on edge this time around, no such issues, as we beat Giovanni first time without any sort of worry. Grabbing our sylph scope and making our way out, the next logical step would be to tackle Erica's gym. The grass type one didn't scare me too much, that is until I got to the front door and met this charming old man peeking through the window with an empty packet of diamond shaped pills next to him. He's all excited about the women inside. He says women, but walking through the door and going directly in line with where he's positioned, the first trainer we see is a schoolgirl. That nasty perv! Anyhow, that don't stop us from going up against Erica and using Milo's powerful jaws to crunch our way 
to the fourth badge. Halfway there now for our gym badge collection and we proceed back to the Lavender Tower. Unfortunately, we're a touch over leveled at this point, so the fight ain't too difficult. That said, it's beginning to be quite clear how powerful Frank's team will be. With the likes of Alakazam, Pidgeot and Charizard just on the horizon, I have reason to be fearful. For now though, we rescue Mr. Fuji and intend to head down to probably the biggest difficulty spike in most single Mon challenges, Koga. Koga has a handful of very nasty tricks up his sleeve. Everything on his team has the ability to poison us with Toxic, a move that never misses when used on a poison type Pokemon, and guess what gym we're in. On top of that, Sludge is a horrific move to be hit by and those Coffin love to spam it. Three of the four Pokemon have Levitate as an ability, and the Muck can use a combination of Minimize and Acid Armor to really negate the effectiveness of our dig. All of that made me realise, I genuinely don't think I can beat him now. Truly. So I take the easy way out, and I don't even try. Instead, I head to Saffron and into the company tower to take on the rival once again. It's been a total of what, like five, six trainers max between our encounters and less than five minutes in time, but my god, has Frank become a huge bloody pain. At level 46, we can barely even get past the Pidgeot, let alone the rest of the squad. I have officially become cuckolded by a damn video game. I need another way to boost my happiness. So, the number 46 is fitting here, it means a lot to me, it's probably the number I've had the most interaction with in my life, and I actually chose to wear it as the number on the back of my football shirt once upon a time. The first person to correctly guess the reason why I love the number 46 so much down in the comments gets a shout out in the next video. Cool, oh, ain't you lot lucky, I'm giving away shout outs in this one like a cheerleader giving away her virginity on prom night, just slinging them about left, right and centre and hoping someone will take it. Anyway, focusing back on the game, and cue the non-existent training montage. We run around the map defeating a huge number of the remaining trainers until we reach a ridiculous level of 59 before challenging Koga's gym. Don't be mistaken here, I needed those levels, all of those levels. I need to be able to effectively one-shot the entire gym, otherwise I run a serious risk of getting toxic. One of those basically guarantees a reset under challenge run rules, so I need to avoid it at all costs. Digon Muck is amazing and Crunch, well, pretty much sweeps the rest of the team. Context, however, is that Sludge from Weezing is still a 3-hit KO, despite being, what, 20 levels higher? So those levels were definitely needed, as I said. And if you thought the spike was over, think again. As it turned out, Koga was a sorbet to clear the bloody palette of difficulty. Wherever I turn next, I'm going to be in the weeds. Blaine is the obvious choice, but Rapidash and Arcanine with Fire Blast is an absolutely terrifying combination on paper. And even at level 60, I don't know if I can beat the rival. It's like sharing a bed with two perverts on Viagra, whichever way I face, I'm getting screwed. I decide on rival. Once I'm past that point, I get Sabrina's Psychic Gym with a nice boost to XP with absolutely zero risk. I figured that Blaine would be harder to deal with than the rival, but if I'm being honest, I ain't so sure. I really am beginning to hate this challenge at this point. My Tiena is one of my favourite Gen 3 Pokemon, despite the lack of physical special split, and I always knew that Poochiena was bad, but you really don't quite get just how bad until it's literally the only option you have. Between getting shafted by pretty much the entire team speed-wise, to getting dropped attack with Intimidate, to being nowhere near capable of tanking a flamethrower from Charizard, Frank is officially a massive pain in my ass. On my winning attempt, I got back-to-back -back crits on Pidgeot and Gyarados, got a special defense drop on Charizard while surviving Flamethrower on only 6 HP from full, and get even more lucky when Alakazam outspeeds me and goes for Calm Mind rather than an attack, and Crunch still one hit, despite the already astronomical special defense being boosted plus one. Bloody effing hell. 
Ooh, I need a breather after that, and Giovanni's up next, thankfully. I managed to dodge the poison point using Dig, and Nido Queen's double kick doesn't do the worst amount of damage. From there, crunch all the way to victory, where we're gifted the Master Ball as a reward, and faced with a dilemma. What are we going to do with it? I'll tell you now, right? I'll tell you one thing that I would never, ever do with a Master Ball, though. Something as rare and valuable as that. I'd never in a million years even think about going off and using it to catch a Zapdos or something purely for views and release it straight away afterwards. I'd never ever do that. No sorry, no not me. Oops. Anywho, my brain said off to Blaine's gym now and remember that combination on paper? Yeah, well even at level 67, still next to impossible. Arcanine does more damage than a lorry doing 70 does to the fleshy skull of a newborn infant under its front wheels. On our winning attempt, we get super lucky, with Rapid Ash missing Fire Blast twice in a row, Blaine draining his potions on it and surviving Arcanine on 12 HP with a burn from full to win. My god. At this point, I remembered Sabrina's gym, so backtracked slightly there. Needless to say, Crunch basically destroys her entire team, and we're left with only one more badge, a rival fight, the Elite Four, and the champion fight left to beat. Final gym is that of the rocket leader Giovanni, and I learn a valuable lesson here. I completely forgot that Earthquake was a thing, so I used Dig like an absolute pleb. Of course, Earthquake deals double damage to Pokemon using Dig, so I get absolutely decimated. To be honest with everyone, I lose here about 10 times before I get a lucky run where a bite flinch on Nido King helps keep me alive long enough to win. With all 8 badges collected, we walk on with our head held high, straight into the clutches of our devious, vicious rival. If you thought the last rival fight was bad, let me tell you now, you ain't seen nothing yet. To win this, I need a very particular set of circumstances to all come together. I need leftovers as my held item for vital HP recovery, and it is vital. I need to be damaged to a very specific amount by Pidgeot, so that one-shotting Rhydon and Execute puts me back on full HP. With Gyarados, I need it to both get a special defense drop from Crunch and use Rain Dance as its move. Anything other than Rain Dance makes it impossible for me to win from my bonkers amount of trying. I lost count of how many resets this was, but it was horrendous. Why do I need Rain Dance? Well, because the rain weakens Charizard's flamethrower and anything less than that is a total and utter one shot. Thanks to the rain, this isn't the case, and knocking it out leaves us on half health with only Alakazam to go. Even disabling Crunch isn't enough to stop a one-shot with Bite. Finally, we have only the Elite Four to go. Lorelei had the potential to be brutal. Lapras is a beast of a Pokemon, and Jinx hits really hard with Ice Punch, while also having Attract and Lovely Kiss to put us out of action. Fortunately, it only took a little bit of figuring out what to do before I could safely check the first member of the Elite Four off my list. It may seem like I've glossed over Lorelei a bit, and that's because I have. After her comes Bruno, and my goodness let me tell you, of all the difficulty spikes, for all the Kogas and the Sylph Company rival fights, I would take them all again in a heartbeat to never have to do this fight with Bruno ever again. The Onyx aren't the issue, those get one shot by Crunch. The real challenge comes from Hitmonchan. This bugger has everything it ever needed to make my Poochiena's life a total and utter crap fest. Secret Power don't quite do half damage, it resists Bite and Crunch. I considered Dig, but it doesn't really do enough to be viable here. Hitmonchan has Rock Tomb, one hit of which lowers our speed enough for it to outspeed us, and it loves to combine that with a brutal Sky Uppercut to knock us out from full health. Even if it doesn't, it knows Mac Punch to attack first the next turn and ensure that we can't proceed. 
I mean, I'm the best part of 30 levels higher here, and I can barely make a dent into his team. So I don't have a choice. I take the L, and I have to use my brain a little bit. I'm looking for a move. I need one that draws from my physical attack so I can make use of my highest stat and Hitmonchan's lowest defensive one. Ideally that move would come with a defense drop of some kind to make sure that my other moves are somewhat viable, and ideally one that can be used effectively in the upcoming fights as well. So racking my brain for a minute, I realized there was really only one option. I rush over to Celadon, collect a coin case, and top myself with enough coins to buy and teach TM Shadow Ball to Poochiana. Ghost is neutral to fighting, and in Gen 3, draws from the physical attack stat of the user. On top of that, it comes with the added effect of being able to lower the opponent's special defense stat by one stage. Not overly useful, but it does mean that Crunch can come into play later on, and even our bite attempts for flinch hacks now chip away a little bit more. With that in hand, I head back to Bruno and try again. Immediately, I race through to Hitmonchan, unleash our Shadow Ball doing more damage than I had before, and immediately getting ended by a Sky Uppercut. Great. Just when I thought I was making progress. Essentially, this fight now comes down to either pure hard luck or pure hard grinding. So yet again, I scamper away and grind to a nice level of 84, now over 30 levels up, and try to go again. But before then, let me give you all some context. I'm going to show you now the Poochiana that I've been working with for this entire playthrough. Quiet nature, so special attack up, speed stat down, with perfect IVs in every stat except for health, and I've EV trained it, 6 in health, 126 attack, 126 speed, and 252 special attack. I've built the most well-rounded, best-placed Poochiena to beat this game, to beat Bruno. I've got to the point where our Dark-type moves are as effective as they possibly can be, where we've trained enough to try and outspeed things, to prop up our already relatively hard-hitting attack stat. I've got a beauty of a mixed attacker on my hands and leftovers to help, and time after time I still get ruined by Bruno. I have, no word of a lie, 37 rounded minutes of footage just on this fight. Which granted doesn't sound like a lot, until you remember that I play the game at 20 times speed to record quicker. Now, my maths isn't great, I only got a C in GCSE maths, but that to me comes out at 740 minutes worth of footage if I'd recorded it in real time without speed up. For context, more context, that's just under 12 and a half real world hours just to get this one run in this one fight and we still have more fights to go. I come back at level 90 and kick off the fight. I crunch the onyx as per and hit bite on the Hitmonchan, getting both a critical hit and a flinch. One shadow ball finishes it off. Hitmon Lee next and I go for the same strategy. Bite gets another flinch before a shadow ball knocks it out. But this is where the real challenge begins, because next up is the big one, the Machamp. One cross chop from this thing is enough to end us from full, so I need to be very, very careful. The issue here is that Bite does next to no damage and I just don't trust myself to get any luckier with the flinches. Instead, I opt for Shadow Ball and get a critical hit one-shotting the Machamp and effectively winning the fight because he's only Onyx up next. Let me tell you, I've never been more relieved to beat a trainer than I was with this one here. I saved the game about 20 times. That's not even an exaggeration there. I exported the save file just in case something happened and I needed to go back, just so I didn't have to do this again. Oh, I'm finally done talking about Bruno. Yep, no more. We don't talk about Bruno. Oh, no, no. What we do get to talk about is Agatha. And talk about some total guilt action with this one. Am I right, fellas? Can think of a couple uses for that cane she got. Unfortunately, she beat me with it a few times. Joke's on her though, I keep coming back for more. 
Her issue was firstly the Arbok, being a screech sludge bomb user. It knocked me out more than once. Then a uh, Gengar. Hypnosis Nightmare users can be horrible. There is nothing worse than getting stun locked in a children's video game. But between you and me, RNG aside, it actually wasn't that bad. Sure, it weren't as straightforward as I would have liked, but Shadow Ball was most definitely useful here. The final member of the Elite Four, Lance, is next, and I made some terrible plays here at first. It took me god knows how long to remember that Dragonite has inner focus as its ability, preventing flinching and making all my bite spam attempts absolutely useless. On top of that, Hyper Beam is a nasty hitter. I do, however, get this run pretty early on, maybe within 15 or so resets, I'd say. Gyarados tries to hurt us with Twister, but a couple of crunches is all that takes. Aerodactyl tries to be a pain with its own Hyper Beam and Ancient Power, but more importantly than that, it drains a full restore. Crunch hits unnecessarily critical to take it out, and Dragonite barely hangs on to a second critical crunch in a row. At this point, I realised that Dragonair doesn't have inner focus, it has shed skin. So, bite hacks are back on if I wanted to try. I figured that at 20 odd HP, this was going to see me lose and reset anyway, so what the hell? Except after three critical hits in a row, I follow it up with a flinch and knock out the Dragonair with crunch after it heals up. The second dragon out now, and leftovers have worked enough magic to put me back into orange health. So I hit crunch, and with one final critical hit, we beat the last Elite Four member, Lance. And I don't know if you can tell, but it makes me happy just watching this back and reading the script. Because I used so much luck in that fight, it is unbelievable. I genuinely reckon I've used up all my luck though, and I know that the champion battle is going to be horrific. The good thing about it though, is that we fought and beat his exact team before. Sure, there are a couple of evolutions, but ostensibly the team is identical. I know the strategies, and I know I can win. I believe I can win. And going into the fight, I definitely do not win. The problem for this fight is that I'm outsped by Pidgeot and Aerial Ace can never miss, hitting decently damage wise. It is a two hit KO with Crunch, even managing to drain a full restore in the process. Alakazam sets up Reflect but goes down to a single Crunch, bringing out Rhydon. I opt for Bite and get a lucky flinch, putting it into full restore range. A Crunch and another Bite knock it out and Executor comes into the fray. I'm not scared, as a single crunch is a one shot to tee up the showdown with Gyarados. Again, I'm not frightened of it, so I opt for bite, not even for the flinch that we do get, but because I thought then bite and crunch would be enough to knock it out. It only spams Dragon Rage anyway, but we didn't knock it out. We go back and forth for a bit, with full restores, crunches, Dragon Rages all being exchanged, but the thing goes down eventually and Charizard is all that stands before me. But the unthinkable happens. I am outsped by Charizard and Fire Blast knocks me out. Oh my god, <laughs> I was so close. But I genuinely did not know if it was possible. We're level 93, we are, we've only got seven levels to play with. And regardless of that, Milo has some of the worst stats out there. But for what it's worth though, I reconsidered my position. Fire Blast only has 85% accuracy, and I've proved that I can get to the Charizard. That was it. I knew I could do it. All I needed was a little bit of luck, a little bit of missing and crunching to land hard. I knew I could do it. I was reinvigorated, and I stepped back in. Pidgeot emerges first, and just like last time, Crunch isn't enough, drawing a full restore, and it's spamming Aerial Ace. Alakazam goes down to a single crunch as per usual, and the Rhydon is next. Big Bertha over here flinches to bite and goes down to the second. Executor next, and a single crunch is enough to bring out Gyarados. I spam bite, but I get no flinches, getting it into full restore range before hitting a double crunch to KO combo. At long last, it's me and the Charizard. 
I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, all I need is a miss. One miss. And I get it. But Crunch only does half health and a Citrus Berry boosts it back up. I'm in serious trouble now. It goes for Fire Blast and misses the second one in a row. Crunch gets it down low, but it's only to red. I can't believe it. What are the odds that Charizard will miss three Fire Blasts in a row? Well, it gets a full restore and we hit Crunch, so it doesn't really change the outcome. I only need one more miss. And I get it. Knocking out the Charizard and finally beating the champion and this challenge. Milo, named after my own dog, has conquered the Pokemon League as a little runt. After the fight, I do the only noble thing. I allow Milo to evolve into my Tiena, as he's wanted to do for so long. And if you ask me, I think he deserves it. With that, my my Tiena Milo enters the Hall of Fame, and this one is challenge complete. Oh my god people, you really have no idea how brutal this was. Most single Pokemon challenges are possible, and it's rare to come across one that genuinely seems impossible. But at so many points in this run, I honestly believed I wasn't going to be able to do it. The sheer relief of being able to prove myself wrong is one of the best feelings out there, and I hope that has come across in the way that I've spoken about this challenge and recorded this script. Because even reading it back and looking at the footage reminds me just how fulfilling completing this challenge was. Anyway everyone, thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate the time you give to watching these videos. Look, as I said earlier in the video, stay to the end and I'll tell you. The plan is that life is a bit crazy and so I'm only planning to make and release one video every month to be released on the first, like today. Please leave your challenge suggestions in the comments. Like I said, if I pick your challenge, I'll give you a shout out in the next video. Check out the Discord channel, link is in the description, and get involved with the community, get involved with the Breathish Empire. And with that, I wish you all well, and I look forward to seeing all of you, and hopefully some more, in the next one.